the name of Artful Dodger out of the hat and we were sort of sat on a cup of coffee and we thought you know what can we call ourselves we don't want to call ourselves anything that um, that we're going to stick with because we were doing bootlegs and we thought you know we didn't know how the business works we thought somebody was going to come down hard on us for doing these bootlegs of olive and all that sort of stuff and, yeah. and the name just sort of stuck and, and we carried on as we started working with Craig again it was a local lad uh, he was like 15 uh, when he first came to the studio wow. he used to turn up in a school uniform and um, yeah and the whole thing was just bunch of mates you know trying to sort of trying to make a living badly and, mm -hmm. uh, and just enjoying the process Baby, really. won't you keep your and uh, where have you been off for mark we've missed you <laughs> <laughs> i set up probably at the wrong time i set up like publishing company a label and had a stable of producers all here mm -hmm. and the idea was just to kind of work you know create a business you know um, using for other people mm -hmm. but it was right at the time where the whole internet thing and naps that took off and you know people were, were able to kind of download tracks for free so, so yeah you know we were I suppose one of the kind of last people to benefit from the, the sort of huge physical sale. Part of this new project, you know, setting up the new label, Workhouse, was um, for exactly that reason. We kind of want to embrace the technology. I mean, we love what you guys are doing. And you've got a couple of kids, but are you still a raver at heart? Oh yeah, I think I'll always be. I think I'll be one of those embarrassing like seven-year-olds <laughs> that turn up at that passion. Love the whole kind of Facebook, Twitter. You know, I'm addicted to Twitter, and you know, I love the fact that you can kind of. You know, interact more and okay so we have to give some of the music away for free I'm not in this necessarily to make gazillions of pounds I just want to make music and actually get it heard because the most frustrating thing over the years is just having loads of great music sat on the hard drive that nobody gets to hear I mean some kind of classic old garage samples <laughs> some of the old kind of artful dodger stuff and I tend to kind of use this as a sketch pad, so I'll throw loads and loads of loops, loads of ideas, uh, and I'll kind of play with them. Some stuff that I'll use live in the live shows. What I'm going to do is uh, talk you through one of the tracks, um, one of the new tracks, because uh, it's actually with Ed Sheeran, who obviously you, you guys know very well. Um, this is a track we did together, uh, and what I'm actually using, um, literally we just uh, plugged Ed directly into the focus, right, which I tend to record most of my guitar. Um, through the Focusrite producer pack um, and even vocals as well. The actual vocal booth next door comes straight through to the back of the um, Focusrite digitally. Um, and that's pretty much the only external stuff we used. So everything kind of plugs straight in there and um, all the drums, all the synths, um, you know, all the effects are actually kind of within logic. This is you know, quite a simple setup. Beautiful AKG solid tube that, that's lasted me years and it's switched on all the time. And I'm using, um, you know, really simple stuff for this sequence. Uh, as you can see, there's not a lot to it. Um, everything in blue pretty much is kind of guitars, all the, li the live audio. So it's kind of guitar, B you know, BBs down here and um, the comp of uh, Ed's lead just down the bottom. And then, so MIDI-wise, you know, all we've got is a really kind of simple beat, really simple beat, um, bass line, uh, and yeah, drums, I mean, you know, hardly anything at all. As you see, you know, if you take away the kind of guitar and vocals, it's just like a really sort of simple sequence. Yeah, so you can hear that kind of big sort of sub bass. I'm not sure whether the mic will pick it up, but almost like, kind of like a dubstep -y type, you know, real, just, you know, kind of contrasted against the, the kind of live strings and the live guitar. We might have had the beat playing, which I believe is this bit. And yeah, everything, everything MIDI-wise, beats. Um, I use the, uh, the CME UF8 just to kind of program everything in. It doesn't do 
well, I mean, I don't use anything other than just the, the keyboard for, for playing in the sounds. And really, you know, I'm using nothing out of the ordinary. Um, you know, I've got the EVP88, which is a built-in Logic sound, the XS24 samples, um, a Trillion I'm using for the bass line, which is obviously something uh, I've brought in. So it's all really simple stuff, a few little samples in there, but um, I, I try and keep the sort of production stuff as simple as possible. I don't want to try and blind everybody with science and st stick a load of kind of trendy sounds in. It's just really simple. Uh, and my love in music has always been kind of finding new talent and mm. uh, developing new artists anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, so as nice as it would be to kind of go back and, and do stuff with the old guys, and, and I would always do that um, for fun. You know, my focus these days has to be on mm -hmm. sort of developing new, and which is why I love work, working with Ed. Yeah. Is, uh, you know, um, these sort of hot property at the moment, mm. and, and the sort of new young fresh talent. Mm. It kind of keeps my production style a little bit younger as well. Mm. So that leads me nicely on to what you're doing at the moment. You just mentioned that you're working with our pal Ed Sheeran. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Had, had a great session with him. Um, you know, we only did a day, um, but he's you know he's what I love about the kind of UK music industry at the moment it's very mm. vibrant again there's loads of fresh ideas and and just the way people are doing things are uh, very different and I love the way kind of Ed set himself up uh, you know and you guys have set yourself up with SBTV mm. and it's all about kind of viral and, and like engaging with your fans so yeah. for this time around it's like you know there's no real sort of pressure from my point of view um, so the idea was just to set up a new label completely independent you know keep the majors yeah. out of it and just make music for me again and, and, and get to work with people like Ed and um, Sydney Marie and mm -hmm. Sean Williams, and, you know, all these kind of great new talent. And there seems to be a kind of mood in the air about bringing Garage back, well, right? A lot of people are saying it. I, I, <laughs> I, I sort of, even with Ed, I was kind of strongly resisting it because I didn't yeah. want to be seen as like a kind of one trick pony because I, mm. I sort of obviously moved on to Craig's stuff, mm. which wasn't, you know, wasn't kind of UKG really, the, the sort yeah. of follow up stuff. Um, but you know, I've always loved the sound. I've kind of loved the beats, and you know, and it's got a very sort of kind of British essence to it. So uh, you know, who knows? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite happy to sort of play with a few beats again and, and do a few tracks and, and see where it leads. But it will take really. It'll take the kind of public to if if they want it badly enough. Well, it's been lovely sharing a swinging seat with you. Thank you very much for having us around. You have been watching SBTV. I've been Georgia LA, and I think the time has come to say re-e-wind. When the crowd says bye, see you later.